silent. Hello, everyone. Do you know who was Oppenheimer? The J. Robert Oppenheimer, born on April 22, 1904, in New York City, came from a family with a strong intellectual background. His father, Julius Oppenheimer, was a wealthy German immigrant who became a successful textile importer, while his mother, L.A. Friedman, was a painter and a member of the Women's Zionist Organization of America. Growing up in an environment that valued education and culture, Oppenheimer developed an early fascination with books, especially those related to science and literature. In 1922, Oppenheimer enrolled at Harvard University, where he studied chemistry, but he soon switched his major to physics, a decision that would shape the course of his life. He graduated summa cum laude in 1925 and traveled to Europe to continue his studies at the University of Cambridge and the University of Göttingen, where he had the opportunity to work with prominent physicists of the time. Returning to the United States in 1927, Oppenheimer earned his PhD in physics from the California Institute of Technology. His doctoral thesis titled On the Quantum Theory of Molecular Band Spectra showed early signs of his exceptional talent in the reticle physics. He rapidly gained recognition and respect from his peers for his contributions to quantum mechanics and the emerging field of theoretical physics. Throughout the 1930s, Oppenheimer held various academic positions and conducted groundbreaking research, particularly in quantum electrodynamics and neutron-proton interactions. His brilliant mind and deep insights earned him a reputation as one of the leading theoretical physicists of his time. He received numerous awards and honors, including the prestigious Lorentz Medal in 1937. When World War II erupted in Europe, the world was forever changed and scientific minds worldwide turned their attention to the development of military technology. In 1941, shortly after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the United States officially entered the war and the U.S. government initiated the Manhattan Project, an ambitious and secretive program aimed at creating an atomic bomb before Nazi Germany could develop its own. Due to his extraordinary reputation in the scientific community and expertise in theoretical physics, Oppenheimer was invited to join the project. In September 1942, he was appointed the scientific director of the Los Alamos Laboratory, located in the remote desert of New Mexico. At Los Alamos, Oppenheimer's leadership was instrumental in bringing together a diverse group of scientists, engineers, and support staff from all around the world. The Manhattan Project was a colossal scientific and engineering endeavor that required groundbreaking research and the collaboration of thousands of people. Oppenheimer's leadership style was characterized by his ability to inspire and motivate the scientists under his command. He fostered an environment of openness and creativity, allowing researchers to freely exchange ideas and information, which significantly accelerated the development of the atomic bomb. Oppenheimer's brilliance and relentless dedication culminated in the successful Trinity test, which took place on July 16, 1945, in the desert near Alamordo, New Mexico. The Trinity test was the first detonation of a nuclear device, and its success marked a turning point in history. The world had entered the nuclear age, and the devastating power of atomic weapons had been unleashed. After witnessing the Trinity test, Oppenheimer famously quoted the Bhagavad Gita, an ancient Hindu scripture. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. This moment captured the weight of the moral and ethical dilemmas faced by scientists who had contributed to the creation of such a destructive force. 
Oppenheimer's statement reflected his own internal struggle with the consequences of his work, as he grappled with the immense power that science had placed in humanity's hands. The dropping of atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August 1945 brought an end to World War II, but it also ushered in a new era of fear and uncertainty. The destructive potential of nuclear weapons posed a significant threat to global security, and the world was now confronted with the reality of nuclear warfare. In the aftermath of the war, Oppenheimer's views on the use of atomic weapons shifted dramatically. He became an outspoken advocate for arms control and international cooperation to prevent the proliferation of nuclear weapons. He was convinced that science should be harnessed for peaceful purposes and that scientists had a moral responsibility to address the broader societal implications of their work. However, Oppenheimer's post-war advocacy for peace and disarmament didn't sit well with everyone, as the Cold War intensified and tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union escalated, fears of espionage and communist infiltration spread throughout the American government and society. In this atmosphere of paranoia, Oppenheimer's past associations and political leanings came under scrutiny. Accusations of disloyalty and communist sympathies were leveled against Oppenheimer, leading to a government hearing in 1954. The hearing, known as the Oppenheimer Security Hearing, was a highly publicized and contentious event that attracted widespread attention from the media and the scientific community. Oppenheimer's security clearance was ultimately revoked and he was effectively barred from working on sensitive government projects. The decision to strip Oppenheimer of his security clearance was met with both support and outrage. Many of his fellow scientists, including some who had worked with him on the Manhattan Project, viewed it as an unjust and politically motivated action. They saw it as a direct attack on intellectual freedom and an attempt to suppress dissenting voices in the scientific community. Despite this setback, Oppenheimer continued to contribute to science and public life. In 1947, he became the director of the Institute for Advanced Study at Princeton University, succeeding the esteemed physicist Albert Einstein. He held this position until his retirement in 1966. During his tenure at Princeton, Oppenheimer focused on advancing theoretical physics and promoting scientific collaboration. Throughout the remainder of his life, Oppenheimer remained deeply engaged in discussions about the ethical implications of scientific research and the responsible use of scientific knowledge. He advocated for international cooperation on scientific matters and emphasized the importance of using science to address societal challenges and promote peace. J. Robert Oppenheimer's life and legacy are a testament to the complex interplay between science, politics, and morality. He was a brilliant physicist who made significant contributions to scientific understanding and played a central role in the development of nuclear weapons, altering the course of history forever. However, his legacy is also marked by the ethical dilemmas faced by scientists in times of war and the consequences of their actions. The story of J. Robert Oppenheimer continues to captivate us today because it serves as a reminder of the dual nature of scientific progress, one that can lead to both great advancements and grave dangers. Oppenheimer's experiences also raise profound questions about the responsibilities of scientists and the impact of their work on the world at large as we grapple with the challenges of the modern age, including issues related to nuclear proliferation, climate change, and technological ethics, 
Oppenheimer's story serves as a poignant reminder of the need for thoughtful reflection and moral consideration in scientific endeavors. In the light of the information shared, what is your opinion on this subject? Please do not forget to share your thoughts with us in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification for more such videos. See you in another video.